I can't begin to imagine where this desk has been, and I'm not entirely sure of its age. At some point, it was painted with this landscape scenery, and while I look at it with my eyes wide, I just hope that whoever spent all this time painting it enjoyed the process, and that they loved it even more when it was done. My initial inspection of the desk showed that there was veneer damage and veneer damage that had occurred prior to them painting it. There were also several nails holding the top down and just general flaking of paint on the top. Welcome to the Ugly Duckling Winter 2022 Challenge hosted by Corey at Desert DIY. The playlist with other Ugly Duckling transformation pieces is linked in the description box below, so once you're done here, go check out some other Ducking Good refinishes. The time for this desk to exist in the universe as landscape art has passed, and it's time to make this thing into something that can be loved by someone new. When starting this piece, I opted to clean it, even though I'm going to strip it for obvious reasons. I cleaned the inside and the outside, but there were some staining on the back drawers that would need to be taken care of later. I assume at some point before this desk was painted that the previous owner opted to fix the top that was loose by nailing it to the base with several extremely long nails and even a few screws. This was a challenge to remove because they were obscured by the paint and pretty well hammered down. As I showed in the initial images, several of these nails had gone right through the trim and they were exposed and then just simply painted over. It took a bit of time to wedge the nails out and unscrew the screws, but the top held together just fine even after they were removed. Next, I moved on to stripping the paint off of the desk. I'm fairly certain the previous refinisher used acrylic craft paint on this piece over white chalk paint. I had to apply two coats of stripper and then scrub with a stripping brush on the second coat to get the second layer to come up. To neutralize the stripper, I used afterwash and steel wool. The side panels on the desk were just that. They were thin panels like the backboards and they had a veneer over top. I ended up flipping the desk on its side to allow the stripper to sit more evenly on the surfaces and I repeated the same process for the other side of the desk.
it was very important for the initial vision of this piece that I successfully harvest the veneer off of this center drawer to use on the other drawers. My goal was to remove the veneer and then add new veneer, which you can see sitting on the desk in the background. To remove the veneer, I used a heat gun and a metal scraper to carefully wedge the veneer off. The second layer of veneer had already started to come up, so I decided to remove it to have a more stable substrate to work with. I'm really happy that I did remove it because what I found under that second layer did not need to be hidden with veneer. My plan is to use the harvested veneer from that center drawer to repair three of the drawers with missing veneer. Before I attempted these repairs, I had to glue down any of the loose veneer on the drawers, and then I also had to clean off those areas of paint residue where the veneer patches would go. I then used painter's tape to create a template for the patch, and then I glued the veneer into place after carefully cutting it with a sharp blade. I know there's a lot of intimidation around repairing veneer. You're essentially just making a puzzle. I've found that using a sharp, inflexible blade makes this a lot easier. I also will go back and use a color matching wood filler on the seams to fill any of the potential gaps. By no means am I the master of veneer patching, uh, but the only way you can get better at something is to keep practicing. After I patched up all the veneer, I clamped the drawers up and left them to dry overnight. For the top, the holes where the nails and screws had been needed to be filled. I didn't want to just use wood filler, only because some of the holes were rather large. Instead, I opted to use a 1 inch plug to fill those holes. After drilling out some of the larger holes with a 1 4th inch drill bit, I cut plugs using the drawer front that I kept from my previous Ugly Duckling project. I just peeled back the veneer on the drawer face and the wood looked close to the top of the desk. Cutting plugs generates a lot of extra sawdust, which I mixed with wood glue and packed into the holes. And then once the wood glue had filled the majority of the holes, I used the plugs on the larger holes and gently tapped them in. I 
I also used some natural wood filler to fill in some of the small seams on the top. After everything had time to dry and set up, I began sanding everything. I used 150 grit on my first pass, alternating between my orbital sander for flat surfaces, and then I had to hand sand on the detailed areas. I then came back and strictly hand sanded with 180 grit on all surfaces. This was probably the most time consuming part of the entire refinish, but improper sanding can ruin any of the work you've done, especially if you blow through any of the veneer surfaces. Normally, I would stain an entire project to give it all one solid color and appearance, but the top on this desk completely changed my vision of what I had initially intended to do. So rather than stain the entire top, I'm just staining the plugs and the patches on the top to color match better using General Finish's Antique Walnut. I chose to use Osmo hard wax oil in a clear satin finish to seal the piece. I'll put some links below in the description so you can read more about it, but it's an environmentally friendly wood finish. The appealing part to me is that hard wax gives a different feel than your typical polyurethane coating, and the only way I can describe it is it's more earthy. If you have a vision of where this desk is going, this makes more sense than a polyurethane coating. Since the instructions on the can say that you could use a brush, I opted to brush on the Osmo and it says to keep the coats very thin. I found that I had problems with keeping the coats thin, especially on the sides. So I eventually came back with a microfiber sponge and wiped back the excess oil. The back panels on the desk had been pretty beaten up, so I ended up replacing those with some scrap underlayment board I had from other projects. I believe these have birch veneer over them and they do not take stain really well. So I ended up using black paint to make the back of the desk look a bit more cohesive. After the back was painted, I went in for my second coat of Osmo. I felt the grain had raised on it a bit, so I used some 600 grit sandpaper and smoothed everything out. And then for the second round of application of Osmo, I applied it just using the microfiber sponge. This was super easy. The top took less than 30 seconds to coat and the finish was really smooth. I 
I did use a water-based polyurethane to seal in the back. The paint I used is clay-based, and I didn't want there to be any potential black paint mishaps against any walls this desk is against. This will help to seal everything in. Finally, I used Howard's Feed and Wax on the drawers inside and out and the drawer slides inside of the desk. This will help the drawers not only smell delicious, but slide more easily. Painted furniture pieces are always a gamble. Sometimes you get this amazing wood top that's hidden, and other times you understand why it's painted in the first place. I really loved how this vibrant yet rustic look brought this desk back, and I hope you enjoyed watching this transformation. Feel free to check out my other videos, and make sure you watch the other Ugly Duckling transformations. Playlist will be linked in the description below. Until next time, thanks for watching.